Hello Python programmers. So in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can create a GUI world clock using Python. So first of all, let me show you that what will be the final output. So there you can see this is our GUI world clock. Now I know that this is not a beautiful looking clock, but I have focused more on the functioning of this GUI and placements of the components. Okay. Now I know you can work on a more beautiful GUI. I trust you guys. Okay. So first of all, let's see that what are the packages required for this project. We need Kinter to create the GUI. Pretty obvious. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you should have guessed that I have used Kinter for GUI and we'll be using PYTZ to extract the current time of different time zones. And we have used our date time package to convert this data into exact date time data type. Okay, so we don't need to install Kinter, but we do need to install PYTZ. So open the CMD and just write pip install PYTZ, press enter and this package will be installed for you. For me, this is already installed. You don't need to install date time. You don't need to install Kinter because it comes pre-installed with any distribution of Python, whether you are using Anaconda or you have downloaded Python from its website. Okay, so this is done. Let's go to our editor to write our code. Okay, so now we are into our editor. So our first task is to import the required library, which is Kinter, PYTZ, date, time and time. Okay. Okay, so now we have imported the required libraries. Date time will be used to convert the data extracted from the PYTZ package into date time data type, which then be printed into our GUI. Okay. PYTZ will be used to extract the current time from different time zones. Okay. Kinter will be used to create our GUI and time package will be used to run our clock function continuously. Now, if you have already watched our previous video in which we have created a stopwatch or a digital clock, then you must be familiar with how we are going to use this time package. Okay. If you haven't watched them, I would suggest you to watch them first, but if you are rigid on staying in this video, then I'll explain you in this video also. Okay. Okay. So first of all, let's create our Kinter GUI. So first we'll create a Kinter instance with the name of root and then we'll define the geometry, the size, uh, which is let's say, uh, 300, uh, by 250, let's say. We'll check that. Okay. Then as we know, our clock has three component. First is the country name. Second is the clock itself. And third is the label of our minute and second. Okay. So we'll create three labels here. Okay, so now we have created our three labels. Let's close our main loop. So root dot main loop. Let's save this and run our program. We are getting an error. Let me see what that error is. Uh, font is not defined because it, there, there should be an equal to sign here. There should be an equals, equal to sign here also. Okay, so let's run this. And okay, we have created our GUI. Now let me assign some text here first so that we can see whether it's working or not. Let's assign any random text uh, to just check whether our components are at the right place or not. Okay, so I just uh, missed the comma here. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, so our GUI are exactly at the right place but our GUI is not of the right size so let's take this to be 500 and yeah 
now it is good okay so what we have to do is we need to copy this uh, these three components three times more and then we have to change the coordinates now first of all let me take some time to explain you that what is happening here we have created three labels first label will show the name of the country okay so we are using this label class here first parameter is root which is the gui variable second is the text that it will display now we'll create a function above which will write the name but just to show you i am writing the text here also okay and then third parameter is the font now it is times new roman size is 20 and it is bold okay same we are doing for our clock also first is root second is text which will be the time third is font times new roman size is 25 and it's bold and the third is nota now i don't know i have why i have chosen this name nota but whatever it is first parameter is root the text is the label of hours minute and second and it is of the size 10 okay then we have placed them at their respective positions now as you already know you can play along with this value you are free to do everything okay now let's copy this for four times first we'll create our GUI then we'll create the function which will write the time and the country name okay so I have copied this so just a second let me rename and change the positions also like this is placed at x axis 30 and y axis 5 so just imagine the Kinter GUI as the graph and then add the x of 30 unit and y of 5 unit we'll place this label and then at x axis 10 and y axis 40 we'll place this clock variable at x 10 y 80 we'll place the nota label okay so let me do the same for others also now make sure you change the names of the variable okay okay so perfect okay so let me explain you that how i have chosen the coordinates for these labels so first we have taken the value of x30 and y5 for our name of the country okay x10 y40 for our clock and x10 y80 for our r minute and second label now just add 300 on the x axis because we are moving 300 units to the right hand side this is why we'll add 300 to the x axis okay so 330 310 and 310 okay and now we are moving downwards so what we'll do is we'll add 100 to y axis the x will remain the same we'll add 100 to y axis so 5 will become 105 40 will become 140 and 80 will become 180 and same will happen for this also it's moving both on x axis and y axis so this is how i have placed the components on our gui okay so now we have created our gui let's go on to the function which will extract the current time of different countries and then display into our GUI okay so first let me remove these text this was just to show you okay okay so now what we'll do is we'll uh, create times function and now let's create the times function here also so times function this function will be called after these labels are created now first of all we'll write the values which will be changed inside the function so this is clock the clock for our first label so clock.config and the text that will be changed will be a variable let's say uh, local time okay we'll create this variable just wait for a second okay 
So this will be the change of time and then what also we have to change is the name. So name will become a uh, name sorry name dot config and the text that will be displayed for the first name variable is India. Okay. Now let me show you that how this PYTZ uh, package works. So what I'll do is I'll comment out all this part so that I can show you. Okay. So what we'll do is the first thing is we'll create the PYTZ instance for that specific time zone. So we'll call PYTZ time zone. Uh, it should be time zone and then we have to write the name of the time zone. Okay. So first we want for uh, let's say Asia Kolkata. K should be capital. So Kolkata. Okay. And then let's save the time in a local uh, let's say time variable is equal to date time dot now of this home variable. Okay. So first of all we have defined the time zone for which we want the current time and then using the date time dot now we are extracting the exact time okay now let's create a current time variable and then let's convert this uh, time extracted into the correct date time format so strf time the first parameter here will be uh, r this should be inside a string now just wait for a second don't be confused because I'll explain you after I have written the code okay so just wait for a second there you can see that this is the current time of India okay so let me explain you that how this PYTZ package is extracting the time first let me show you another example so that you can believe me that this is showing the correct time so let me see for Australia uh, Victoria Victoria and I'll also show you that how you can know the time zone names also okay so just wait for a second let me run this so this is the current time of Australia okay so first let me explain you that how this is happening then I'll explain you that how you can get the time zones of different countries okay so first of all we have created a home variable in which the time zone is saved okay and then by using date time dot now we have extracted the current time of that specific time zone and then in this current time variable we are storing the hour minute and second format of the current time okay let me show you that how you can know what are the time zones of uh, your country or any country you want to know okay so we have already imported time so what we'll do is we'll just write for time in um, pytz dot all uh, time just a second time zones and then we'll simply print tz okay just a second not the windows key the z key Let's save this and let's run our code. Okay. And there you can see these are all the time zones that you can use in your code to get the time of that specific area. Okay. So there you can see Asia, Africa, Antarctica, America and Africa. Okay. So you can use these time zones. So let me remove this because this was just to explain you actually I'll not remove this one because uh, we'll be using this part of the code. So I'll not remove this one. Okay. So let's unstring this part and what we want is we want the current time of different time zones. So above this one we want the current time zone of India okay so the current time of India is stored in this current time variable so we'll uh, display this into this uh, current time variable let's save this and let me show you first that how this will look there you can see the country name is India the time is for 
actually australia so first let me write this time for india only okay let me save this and run this again and there you can see it is 11 15 in india okay and there you can see that this is fixed this value is not changing because our function is called only once now let me show you that how you can make this uh, function run multiple times so what we'll do is we'll call clock dot and after every 200 second actually microseconds we want to run this times function so let's run this and there you can see after every 200 microseconds this function is repeating itself and hence we are getting the exact time of india now let's do the same for all the countries okay so i guess we have done first is india second is australia third is africa for timbuktu fourth is new york okay so let's run this and there you can see this is our word clock showing the current time of different countries around the globe okay so i'm pretty sure that you're smart enough to just alter this gui and create a more freakingly awesome looking gui okay so this is me signing out but before signing out let me show you a glimpse of the next project that i have created which is the simulation of dice rolling using Kinton. So let me show you. Okay, dice rolling. Let me run this. And there you can see this is our Kinta GUI as usual. Let me press on this button and there you can see this is our two dice of Ludo that you can choose. And there you can see even if your dices are lost, you can use this program to play ludo okay so this is the program that we'll be creating in the next video so make sure that you watch that video also okay so this is it and i'll meet you in my next lecture where we'll create this awesome gui okay so meet you there bye bye